So, Danny, you're the spotlight. Everybody's looking at you right now, so don't get nervous. <laughs> uh, can we hear you? How about that? Okay, I can hear you there. So, uh, it's right at 9 o'clock. Uh, you know, everybody, if they want to take a break, you can just walk away from your computer. But uh, Danny's all ready to go, so we're just going to jump right into your program then. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate the introduction. Appreciate the opportunity to share. Uh, this morning, I was um, talking to a friend at work recently, and as I approached him, I asked him how, how things were going. And he said, I am thinking positive and testing negative. And so I'm hoping that's true of, of all of you all this morning, that uh, everybody's healthy and strong and uh, glad to still do what we can uh, with technology. Uh, to enjoy our, our mutual passion uh, around fountain pens and ink and papers. And so uh, thanks, for, thanks for jumping on. Um, the name of, of my session is called Fountain Pen Hacks. And when I, when I looked up that definition of hacks, it's a, a clever solution. And uh, I think maybe a clever solution that we tend to overlook sometimes. And so when I first got involved in fountain pens, I had the idea that it was going to be a really expensive hobby and then I have to invest a lot of money and equipment and potions and all kinds of, of stuff. But, you know, as I got more into it, I found out if I just look around uh, my house or at the drugstore or at Target or the auto parts place, I can redeploy some things uh, and make use of them uh, in uh, the care of, of my fountain pens. And so I hope uh, there'll be some things that'll be helpful and uh, memorable for you as well. And um, there's a chat feature on here, so I'm going to try to pay attention to that, too. So if you have a question you'd like to ask or a comment, uh, that's the other thing. I really like for this to be interactive because likely in your fountain pen experience, you've come across some hacks, too, some, some clever solutions that uh, you'd like to share with the others. So I'd really like this to be a, a mutual time where, where you can share those as well. So let me just go ahead and jump in and... Um, there's really not a lot of rhyme and reason to this, but uh, I hope it'll be helpful. Uh, many of the pens that I have, more modern pens, are, are metal. And so they have metal grips as well. And in my experience, they can be really slippery and hard to get a grip on. And so I came across something at Walmart called truck bed coating. It's spray paint that folks will spray the bed of their trucks with. Um, it's, it's black and it's very tough and durable. And uh, it also has some texture to it. And so I have sprayed the grips on, on some of my metal fountain pens that make it really, really easy to grip and to hang on to. Um, I just use regular painter's tape uh, to tape it off and then um, and just spray it, take it outside and spray it. So that's called truck bed coating. Here's something else that, that I found at Bed Bath & Beyond. That is a soap dish. It's made out of silicone. <laughs> I'm seeing somebody with the thumbs up there. They may have already discovered it. And so it's clear plastic and it sits on my desk or it will sit in a, um, in a cigar box. And it is perfect for holding about, it can hold up to about five pins equally spaced apart. And I think I paid about three bucks for it, maybe, maybe only two at Bed Bath & Beyond. So that's a soap dish holder. Some of the things that I use when, uh, when working close uh, with pens, especially if you're like me as you get older, your eyes uh, are, don't work quite as well. So um, loops with, with lights on them. This one came from Amazon and it's got a light on it. Uh, a switch that you can turn on and off, and it's real compact. It'll fold up out of the way. The other thing that I found is these little small individual magnifying glasses, and I think this came from um, Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight, and I got about a dozen of them, but what I found is you can use them on their own, but if you stack them, then it changes the magnification on them. So you can drill down even closer when you're doing close work if you stack two or three of them together. And then I also found one that's a little bit bigger. 
uh, that has a built-in light that you can get right down onto your workspace up close to, to where you're working. And then a couple more things related to lighting is I found this little rail back pin light. And the thing I like about this is that it puts a real, a real tight beam in one spot. It's not a floodlight, so you can put it right down the barrel of a pin and see exactly what you're wanting to without just flooding the whole, your whole workspace. So I think I paid about $3 for this, and the, it's a Rayovac is the brand. And the other thing that I use sometimes is just a headlamp. Um, if I needed to go right where my eyes are and I need, I, I've got my, my other, my two hands are full, this helps me kind of put the light right where I need it as well. So it's just an adjustable band on it. I think that was like, I don't know, maybe seven or $8 uh, at Walmart. These have been very helpful uh, in terms of uh, helping protect my marriage. Uh, I use these to soak uh, pens and uh, ink and that sort of thing in there and clean parts with. I used to use my wife's bowls and uh, just had trouble getting them clean. So these little $2 salsa bowls uh, from Walmart are perfect. They've got four legs on them, so they're nice and sturdy. You can fill up a couple of them so you can do different solutions in them. So that's been uh, a real practical tool. This is Teflon tape, and sometimes um, if I need something to be a snugger fit or protect from leaking, uh, this is a real, it, you can get it really flush, it can get down into, um, into your threads as well and make the fit on, the, on your threads a little bit tighter, and it comes right off. If, if you're done with it or if you get too much on there, it'll just peel right off. So it's called Teflon tape. Uh, usually in the... Um, plumbing department, like Home Depot or Lowe's or something. These are called feeler gauges, and they are designed for gapping spark plugs, which we don't need to do much anymore because of the newer engines. But I, I think you can still get these at some auto parts places, maybe for your lawnmower plugs or something like that but they're real, very thin metal shims almost. And it's great for cleaning between the tines uh, in, your, in your fountain pen when you get um, lint or paper or something like that. And it's thick enough to go in there and to work up and down and, and get your, your, uh, your tines clean in that. So that's called um, a feeler, feeler gauges. And it came in a I don't have the original container, but it came with about 25 of them in there. It was way too big. So I just peeled off the, the most narrow, just put it on a little ring that I keep by my workspace. And so I've got about five, five or six on, on just a little ring that I keep close by. Something else related to um, cleaning is these um, microfiber towels. Um, I found these at Walmart too, and that, that may not seem so unusual, but the one that I found um, that I really like has got a different nap on both sides. On one side, it's very, short, it's very short, and then the other side is a little fluffier, so you can do some, some more aggressive cleaning with the longer nap, and then some polishing and shining on the opposite side with the shorter nap. And these come in, in packs. Um, I think I got about five of them for about seven dollars maybe and that's a Walmart deal. This is a pull chain from a ceiling fan and so what I've done with this you know how sometimes the humidity will build up and the ink will stick to the sides of the converter. Well, what I do is I take wire cutters and cut one of these individual beads off. 
drop it down into the converter so that it moves up and down and it breaks the, the static on the sides of the converter and it helps your, your ink continue to flow even when, when the humidity is high. So nothing but a, a pull chain for a, a ceiling fan. And then you can just cut them with a pair of wire cutters. Glass dip pens, okay? I got this little small one from Cary at Art Outfitters. And what I use these for is for testing inks. Uh, if I've got three or four or five different inks that I want to do samples on, I will use these dip pens to do the testing because it's right by my sink. And so I can just rinse it off, wipe it with one of those towels, and I'm ready for the next ink. It's, it's even easier than using a, a regular fountain pen for it because, you know, it's so much harder with the, with the fan there and doing the, the full cleaning, cleaning job. So glass dip pens, really convenient for sampling inks. Does everybody keep mustard and ketchup at your workspace? Yeah, me neither. But I do use the containers and here's what I use them for. Um, in the red one, I keep what's called Awesome Orange. I found this at the dollar store and a whole gallon of it costs a dollar, right? And I fill this up and the Awesome Orange is great for getting ink off of, off of my fingers and off of, um, my workspace, like the, I have a, um, a laundry sink in my workroom, and so uh, that's where I do my work. And so when I squirt the, um, the awesome orange on that, it's really a good cleaner. Then in yellow bottle, I keep simple green. And what I found with simple green is that it will get ink out of fabric. And one of my, one of my big fountain pen accidents was I had a, I had a fountain pen leak one time on a white dress shirt and it was one of my favorites. And I thought, okay, that's it, it's toast. I'm just gonna have to get rid of that. But I bought it home and I squirted it with, with a simple green and it was like the ink just floated away. And then just some, some cool water uh, with the, uh, the hose, the sprayer, and it came out completely. Now, I can't guarantee it'll work with all inks and, and all fabrics, but man, it saved this white dress shirt for me and I was so grateful. So these make the um, make it really convenient because of the tips. You can squirt it right where you want it, and um, and it's just easy. You don't have to do, use the whole big spray bottle that that comes with them usually. So ketchup and mustard. Bulb syringe. Man, this was a great discovery. Uh, we use these when, when our children were younger, uh, um, for sure. But uh, you can uh, get water up into it, and then that tip right there goes right down into the, right above the, the feed, and then you can just force water all the way through it. And I found if you soak your, your nibs for a while and your feet, you think it's really clean, and you soak it for a long time, but man, when you run water through it, it just flows blue or black or red or whatever's in there. It just gets water out, because you're putting some pressure behind it too, and you can just keep squirting water through that until it runs clear. So bulb syringe in the baby department at Walmart. You can't tell from this container, but there's car wax in there. And what I use car wax for is some of my um, uh, pens, resin pens or plastic pens. If I put a coat of this on there and let it dry until it kind of powders a little bit, and then take one of those um, microfiber claws and just, just shine it up really good. It just brings the color out of it, gives it a really nice sheen. So just simple, simple car wax, that's all that is. But I've got it in a little container that I can squirt it out a little bit at a time. Ultrasonic cleaner. It's, made, it's supposed to be for cleaning jewelry. Uh, but man, it's got a basket in there and you can put pins and nibs and feeds and all kinds of parts in there. And it's got a cycle that runs for about four minutes, I think. And it, it just shakes it like crazy. And it shakes all the dried ink out of those little nooks and crannies that you can't reach with anything else. 
Um, I think it's a bed, bath and beyond my um, maybe 20 bucks, but uh, man, deep cleans, super cleans. It's, it's really effective. It's called an ultrasonic cleaner and uh, it's, it's electric. So just have it near, near a place where you can plug it in, but great investment. Lazy Susan, if you're like me and you have limited space to store your parts and inks and that kind of thing, I've, I've got shelves right above the laundry sink where I work, but I put this in there too so that I just uh, align things up on it and so I can pull it around to the front where I can reach it, but it increases my storage capacity um, in my, my limited shelf space. So Lazy Susan, same thing, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, I think. Which type of pin materials are safe to use car wax on? You know what? I should have done a caveat at the very beginning of this. I don't know if any of this stuff is going to void your warranty. Okay, so if if you're if you decide to use some of these things, I, I can't I can't promise that that won't void your warranty. So you're doing these things at your own risk. I just use regular regular car wax. There's nothing tricky or nothing fancy about it. Um, so I've, I've not had any trouble with it, but again, I don't know if that will protect your warranty or not. Semi-chrome polish. This is for shining up parts that are tarnished or metal that's gotten aged and it goes on um, and then dries, kind of like car wax. So you spread it on with a Q-tip or something and you can see the Q-tip starts turning black as you're putting it on there. And then uh, after it dries a little bit to a sheen or to a, to a powder, then again, the microfiber cloth just, just brings it right off. Hey, Carrie, I'm having trouble keeping up with all the questions. Can you kind of help me with that? Can you just, just say them out loud if you see some questions come by as I'm, as I'm working? I don't mind you doing that if you, if you will. Uh, Semichrome polish. I found this at an antique store here in uh, Maumelle, but I know you can get it online too. You're unmuted now. Uh, Danny? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we're getting some feedback. I was just going to read some things to you while you're not talking. Okay, and go ahead. What types of materials are safe to use car wax on? And I, I tried to answer that just a moment ago. I use it on plastics or resins, but again, I, I don't, I don't know if that'll, if that'll mess up, um, if that would be the same on a vintage pen or not. I'm not sure. So I would test it on a, on a small space, uh, just to make sure. It looks like Sean has answered some of the questions in the chat also. Okay, good. The other thing I use for storage, increasing storage capacity is just a little, I don't even know what you call it, step ladder or something. Spice rack. That I sit in. Spice rack, yes, thank you. So I just set that in my, in my cabinet above my workspace too, right next to the Lazy Susan. So because if things are flat, then they get, you know, stacked up in front of each other and I can't, I forget what's behind it, but this way it gives you some elevation so I can see everything and, and be able to reach it good. So just a little simple plastic spice rack. Somebody pointed out that watch out for accidentally touching the nib, wax, orange, yellow, will cause the nib to skip. So I guess if wax gets caught in the nib tines, it could be an oh, issue. Oh, okay, car wax, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't use it on the nib. I just use it on the barrel and on the caps. Okay. Oh, somebody said Renaissance Wax is a good brand for that. Okay. Oh yeah, good. that's Thank Sean Newton. That. Um, more of the, the cleaning uh, tips that I use is this rag called the Sunshine Cloth. And this is what it looks like when it's new. This is what it looks like when you begin to use it. And man, it just brings the tarnish and, and it brings out a shine. You can see yourself in it. It's beautiful. And it works on, on metal or it works on the, the resin as well. So it's called a sh sunshine cloth and it comes with a little plastic tube. And then the other thing I use is a jeweler's cloth. And this one actually has two different, um, one of them's a little, more, uh, a little more rough and the other one's softer for shining, but it's called a jeweler's cloth. And I think I got this on Amazon. 
So a jeweler's cloth and sunshine cloth. Those are the two things that really bring out the shine. Another thing that I use for storage is a salt and pepper shaker. They're, they're really small bases and they sit right beside my, my sink out of the way. But uh, I keep things like uh, tweezers. In there. And then I have a friend uh, that sent me, I think the medical term is hemostat. It's like a little uh, like a little clamp, but it's got a lock on it. So if you need to hold something in place, it'll be locked in place. And then I keep a I keep a pair of scissors in there too. But it's just a convenient way. Convenient way to uh, to store things close by to you. Andrew Ritchie. And we're getting some feedback. Can we get, get most of mute? Is it feedback or crowd uh, noise? Voices. Okay. Uh, it might be the people here. Might, it's people in here. People in here. We'll have to tell them to be quiet. No, don't do that. Can you mute yourself? Yeah, I can mute myself. Okay. The other thing that I keep close by um, are a pair of long nose, needle nose pliers, but they're longer than usual. And so in case I need to reach down inside of a barrel or something or inside of a cap or something, that's an easy way to get down inside there. Um, you have to be careful. You don't want to scratch anything, um, you know, as you're going in. So you have to be careful, but they are pretty narrow. I don't know how close I can get that. They are pretty narrow at the end. So you can usually get inside without, without scratching it. And they got rubber handles on it, so they're really easy to get a grip on. So just many miniature needle nose pliers. Silicone grease, just a little small uh, vat of it. I get it at, um, at Lowe's, it's called silicone grease. Caveat warning, warning, red lights right here. Do not get the kind that is adhesive because some silicone grease has adhesive in it and it's a glue and man, it will lock up whatever you put it on. This is just for, for lubrication only. And you can put it on with a fingertip or you can put it on with a Q-tip and get it right where you want it. But it's called silicone grease and really inexpensive, a couple of dollars for a little small piece like that. Another good uh, clean tip is uh, pipe cleaners. The only warning here is that there's a piece of metal in the middle of it, a really thin piece of metal. And so normally what I do is I bend them in half like that. And then I stick it down into the cap of the barrel. It's nothing but the fuzzy part that's hitting the sides of the, of the barrel of the cap. Because you can tell it at the end, there's a piece of metal in there. So you don't want to scratch anything. You, know, you don't want to stick your shelf either. These are shelf coasters that are rubbery. And so you're supposed to, like shelf liners, you put them on your shelves, keep things from slipping around. Uh, it makes a great grip if you're trying to get something that's, that's stuck and hard to come loose because it's, it's um, if you keep it dry, then you can grab it with this and then get enough, enough traction to get things undone. So just um, shelf liner is what it's called. It's kind of rubber, rubbery feeling. And they come in different sizes. And if it's too big, you can just cut it. Did you cut it into the, the circles or was that the way you purchased it? I found them like that. Danny, we've got a question about cleaning out converters. How would you clean out converters when flushes won't? Hey, great question because that's where I'm going next. I use these right here. These are called dispensing needles. They are, they are, they're, they're, the diameter is wide and they're not sharp. And what pharmacists use them for is to fill like cough medicine. They'll, they'll use it to draw cough medicine out of a big bottle and then squirt it into another one. And so what I do with these is I get, I get them full of water and then I, I force it into the converter and it cleans the ink out. 
they come in different, different, uh, the syringes come in different sizes, but the, the needles are called dispensing needles and they come in different diameters. So just get the, the biggest one you can get. And I, I don't remember, I'm sorry, I don't remember what size these are, but uh, you, have, you have a choice. So yeah, just draw them up tight with full of water and then just force it in and it'll get it right where you want it. Uh, somebody mentioned plastic dip as a good coating for tools. Yeah, great idea. Um, I use that on um, on some of my uh, hemostats uh, and my tweezers too. You just dip it in there, pull it out, and it dries. It's got this plastic coating on it. Another tool that I use for um, for for cleaning are are these little flossing brushes. It's uh, the brand name is. Uh, gum, G-U-M. They come in packs of about six or eight, and they're, the bristles are, are firm enough to clean once you can get it down in there. The handles aren't too long, but usually it's, it's long enough to be able to get into to some places. So they're called flossers, and they come in uh, packs of five or six. Nothing too fancy about these. They are shop towels and they come in, uh, in different, different sizes so that you don't have to tear off a whole sheet. You can tear off like a quarter sheet at a time, but I find that they're more absorbent um, garden variety paper towels. And so again, Walmart auto parts, auto parts department called shop towels. Uh, Danny, somebody mentioned that mascara brushes work great for cleaning if you can find them with no mascara on. Okay, which would probably mean brand new, never used. But yeah, that's a great idea. Okay. These are baby bottle nipple cleaners. And they're different sizes, brushes, firm enough to where you can get them down into some, some pretty tight spots and they come in different sizes, but they came in a, they came in a pack that had all four of these in there. So that's a good way to get down into some tight spaces and still be firm enough to be able to, to put some pressure behind it when you're in there. Um, again, there's metal in the middle. And so I put a little drop of, um, of super glue on the very tip of these so that um, it wouldn't it wouldn't scratch uh, once I was inside. Danny and Nicole mentioned that uh, metal straws cleaners now have that same thing, but with a longer handle. Oh, got it. Okay, thank you. This is kind of a double mention right here. Remember the old, um, I don't know, maybe not old, uh, crystal light containers? What I did was I, I took the top off of the crystal light containers and then just cut it, made it flat. And so I use these as holders for my long Q-tips, which are very helpful in getting in, in far away places. And then I made a couple smaller ones also, cut these off a little bit smaller so that they sit flat, but they'll still hold, they're holding my Q-tips. And these sit on my uh, Lazy Susan, by the way. So I spin these around to where I can reach them. Um, this one is just the, the regular Johnson & Johnson uh, Q-tips. I would encourage you to buy these, though, because they're better quality. If you buy some of the off-brand Q-tips, they, they really shred a lot, and it's just hard to, to keep ahead of the, of, the, of the shedding. So buy the regular, buy the, the good ones. And then the other one that I get are these makeup applicators right here. It's got a flat side on one end and it's got a sharper side on the other end, but it's still Q-tips. And so again, you can reach some spaces with these um, and, and do some, some, reach some spots that are harder to reach. I think these are called Swispers, this is the brand name. Hey Danny, there's a question from Tyler and I don't know if you can answer that one or not, but it's, um, Janice said that he might need to go to fern session, but it's about, let me see if I can read it for you. Um, it's about cleaning a specific pen. Um, any tip for uh, sealing a cap that doesn't have an O-ring already? I have a Levenger L-Tech that I want to do this to. Okay, 
Yeah, I think you're right. There's probably a better fern question. Okay. All right. Who knows what this is? Salad spinner. <laughs> yeah, a lettuce spinner. Yeah. Great, great idea for drying parts. I mean, once you've soaked uh, nibs or caps or barrels or whatever for a while, just drop them in here and give it a ride. And man, it just throws off all the water and gets it a whole lot drier than, um, than you can just uh, with a, a towel or, or, or a rag. So very inexpensive. Um, I don't remember how much I paid for it, but, but it wasn't much. It was, it was well worth it, though. Now, Danny Fudge uses one of those, but he's got a, a, a something on the inside that keeps the pen stationary so it could throw out all the ink. Who does that? Danny Fudge. Okay, and what's the difference in his? Uh, that he's got a setup in the on the bottom of that spinner that will hold a pen per, uh, perpendicular to the outer edge so okay. that it will uh, throw all the ink out. Got it. Okay, excellent. Close pins. This is a good way to get a grip on on something without scratching it. Uh, sometimes you can put the close pin on it first, and then take a pair of pliers and put even more pressure on it if you need to without scratching your pin. If you use a sink to work with your pins, please invest in one of these. It's about twenty five cents. And it saved me a lot of heartburn because when I drop something, it doesn't go down the drain. It's just a little strainer, a little uh, screen drainer. Just drop it in the, drop it in the drain. That way it'll, it'll keep you from uh, losing something important. Let me show you a couple things about journals. This is a journal that I bought from Van S. And Mike Van Ness did that graphic for me. That's actually my signature. And my son made that into a, uh, a file for me, a graphic file with my signature on it. And then I took that file to Mike and he burned that with his laser engraver onto this Rhodia journal for me. And so this is just an example of the kind of magic that Mike Van Ness can do at the store on, uh, on things to personalize it for you. So um, this is one of my favorite journals. I want to brag about Mike for doing that for me. Danny, uh, several people have mentioned about, uh, is there a, a shopping list or a, a total list of everything that you've mentioned here? I can make one. I've got it just kind of handwritten, um, but I can, I can type it up. How would you distribute that? Can I email that to you and have you post it somewhere? We can post it on our webpage. Okay. And we'll, we'll make this a, a link to a YouTube video so that we can do that too. Okay. All right. Well, I will, it, I'll put that together. Great question. Right. It's time to move on to uh, Fern or no, Troy, Troy breeding right now. Okay.